I'm going to illustrate foreign keys uh, from a practical perspective. Let's say I have a business and I have customers and I have transactions scheduled to pay. This is a subscription business, so they subscribe to me and they have transactions pending. All right, so I'm going to create my table customer here. I execute this bit of SQL and then we can see that it worked. And the customer table has a customer ID, which is a primary key, a last name, and a phone. The phone is bar card 20. Uh, usually, if you put a phone as an integer or some kind of number, if there are zeros in front of it, it's not going to work. So uh, a bar card is a good, is a good uh, choice. And then 20 is a lot of length, so you can form it as however you want. Anyways, I create my customer table. I'm also going to create a transactions table. And the transaction table is going to be defined as follows. The transaction table will have a transact ID, which will be a primary key that will increment automatically every time I insert a row. It will have a customer ID, which is card 3, which is the same customer ID, right? So I know this transaction corresponds to what customer. Then the transaction is going to have an amount. I'm going to decide whether it's a purchase or not, for example, a return. Right, so it's a purchase, it's going to be a boolean, true or false. Then the order ID, so what order is this transaction attached to? And then and it's going to be a big int, and then I'm going to use the order date, which is going to be a date time, and it's going to default at the current timestamp. Basically, when I insert a row here, immediately that order date will be um, will have the date at which this insert took place. Okay, so that's my transaction table. I'm going to create it. Now let's say I insert a couple of customers. So I will insert into the customer table SG1, which is Williams with that phone number, and SG2, which is Sampras with that phone number. Right? I will insert that. Now I will insert also on the, um, on the transaction table, I will insert a couple of records. Now, time has gone by. And I have, I count my money. The bank says that I have $5,500 in cash or in the bank. And then I want to see if that matches my transactions. So I select the amount, the sum of the amount from the trans table. Remember the trans table had an amount. So I'm just summing all the amounts for the trans table. And I select it and it says 7,000. There's a discrepancy here. Why could that be? Right? There are many, there are many uh, reasons why this could happen. Maybe somebody mistyped a number or many reasons. But I'm going to assume, just the first thing I'm going to look for is to see if there's transactions that, that did not match any customers, for example, if there's orphan transactions. So what I'm going to check is I'm going to select the customer ID from the customer table its corresponding customer ID from the transaction table, their last name, the order ID, and the amount of the order from the customer table on a right join to the trans table. Uh, the right join will allow me to select everything from the trans table, and if there is no corresponding record on the customer table, I will be able to see that as nulls. So I will run this, and lo and behold, I see that I have, these are the transactions, but the last transaction here, the transaction had an, a customer ID of SG3 with the order ID of 123 and $1,500, which is the difference between the 5,500 uh, $5, and the 7,000. Now, this transaction, this customer SG3, doesn't have a corresponding customer ID in the customer table or last name, right? So. What happens here is there's a transaction for which there's no customer. This is an orphan transaction. How could this happen? Well, many things could have happened. So, for example, one thing could have happened is that, like here, the person made a typo and inserted a record for SG3. Another thing that could have happened is that SG3 was a customer in my database, but for some reason I decided to delete this person as a customer and the transactions were left hanging there. These are two problems that are kind of not good. So what one needs to do is there's a lot of fishing here to try to find out why 
uh, I don't have the same amount of money that I should be having. Now imagine these are thousands of customers and millions of transactions, right? This can get dicey. Right now I know what to look for, but this could get dicey and a lot uh, very time consuming. So what I do instead is use a foreign key. The foreign key will tie, whoops, the foreign key will tie the customer's customer ID with the transaction table uh, customer ID. So what this will say is that you will not be able to insert or to do anything with transactions, right? You will not be able to insert transactions for which there isn't a corresponding customer ID in the customer table, okay? You will not be able to do anything with a customer for which you, you will not be able to delete customers for which there are transactions in the transaction table. That's the foreign key. It creates a bond between these two tables based on the customer ID field. So in order to do that, we could do that at creation time, but since we're running this example, I'm going to do it here using an alter table command. So I will alter the table trans and I will add, I will add a constraint. I can name my constraint. I could, I could put any name I want here, so Duffy if I want to, but I will use fk underscore cost ID basically saying this is a foreign key on the field customer ID. What constraint am I going to add? I'm going to add a foreign key on customer ID from the trans table and this will create a bond or a reference to the customer ID in the customer table. So I will create this constraint. Okay, here's the problem, right? So there's an error. Why is that error happening? Well, the error is happening because to create a foreign key, to create any kind of constraint, first the database has to be clean for that constraint to take place. And remember, in our table, we still have, in the transaction table, we'll still have this SG3 record. So we have to delete the SG3 record. So we'll delete the SG3 record from the transaction table, thus cleaning the database. If you run the select again, we will see that there is no SG3 anymore in the transaction table. And now I can add the foreign key. Now that went through, it's green. Um, now what I'm going to do is for whatever reason, SG1, client SG1, decided to leave our service. He's not going to be or she's not going to be a customer of us anymore. So I'm going to delete the customer. I will try to delete it, right? I will try to delete this customer, uh, and I won't be able to. I will have an error. The database won't let me delete this customer because there's a foreign key constraint that fails. Basically, what it's telling me is that, hey, this customer ID with this ID has records on a different table. You can't just delete it from customer because it affects something else. In the same way, if I try to insert the typo, right, with SG3, and I try to insert it, I get the same error. A foreign key constraint fails because there is no customer SG3. So you can have a record in trans table with a customer SG3. So this in terms of constraint is great. Now, however, what I need to do, say for example, to delete a customer from the customer table would be first to delete all of this person's transactions and then delete the customer record. So it's a two-step. Now imagine these are many, many tables all, um, all tied to each other. And there's, you know, I need to delete, I don't know, hundreds of clients a week and add hundreds of clients a week and so on and so forth. Doing it in two steps is very prone to error. If I forget to do one step, then, you know, I, I might, I, it might error out the whole thing. My database might have an error. So instead of doing that, foreign keys also pack something else called triggers. And the foreign keys pack a couple of triggers. One of them is a trigger that says, if you delete a record in the master table, the big table, customer table, delete all the children from the other table. That's, that's a trigger that we can add to the foreign key. So let's go ahead and try to, to add it. Oh, by the way, I want to select everything from customer just to see that SG1 was not deleted. 
But so let's try to add that. Now we cannot modify a foreign key. So what we'll have to do is drop this foreign key, FK cast ID, we'll drop that foreign key and we'll create a new one with the trigger. So we will drop the foreign key FK cast ID and then we will create, we will add a constraint again, a foreign key cast ID that referenced this, but then on delete, the action will be cascade delete. So what it says that if a customer ID is deleted from the customer table, then cascade delete all the children on the trans table. So we'll, we'll run both these commands. They worked. And now let's see. In the customers, we have Williams and Sampras. And in the transactions, if we use our old select, we still have transactions for both Williams and Sampras. Now I'm going to delete this customer SG1. Delete the customer from the customer table. I'll run this. Now it worked. It didn't error out. But let's see. Was it really deleted? I'll select everything from the customer table and I see that there's no SG1 anymore. And are there any transactions orphaned from this record? No, there aren't any. There, you don't see SG1 here. So that is a foreign key with one of its custom triggers. You have other triggers on update, for example. You can do other things. And you can also do triggers independently. You can create your own triggers. And that's the topic of the next video.